Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It is the 13th of September. As always, if this is useful, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. So new videos this week. I actually started to release my Azure Masterclass. I've been talking about doing this for months and months, so I finally got around to actually recording and starting to upload it. So I uploaded just a very short five minute intro and then I uploaded the first kind of main module, which is just a foundational module going through the basics. My goal is to release one module each week. I'll just upload. There's a special Azure Masterclass uh, playlist you can use to follow along. So identity, I'll be recording just after this update. I also released a video on how Azure App Services can talk to resources in virtual networks and vice versa how things in a virtual network can maybe privately talk to Azure App Services. So I go through those constructs. Don't forget, I mentioned this last week, but Ignite is still open for registration. It is free. So you can go to that link, September 22nd to 24th, get access to a whole bunch of really cool kind of technical sessions. So what's new in the world of Azure? A little bit quiet this week. So the AKS Health tab, moved from public to limited preview. So previously, if I went to insights for my Kubernetes cluster, there was this kind of health tab. Well, it's been moved out into a limited preview based on customer feedback. So there's still enhancements, but if you notice it disappeared, that's because it's been moved into a limited preview. If you want it back, uh, you can go and kind of request access to that preview. Automatic VM guest patching is now in preview. And if you're like me, you might be thinking, what's the point in this feature? Uh, Windows Server already has a kind of automatic capability where it will just go and download patches and apply them. But it's actually a super interesting feature. Now it's focused just on kind of critical and security patches. It's Windows Server 2012 R2 and above. Today, it has to be enabled. Well, first you have to sign in and be part of the preview, and then you have to do it at VM creation time. Again, this is a preview. This will change over time. And what it's going to guarantee is to apply those critical and security updates within 30 days. But it is aware of kind of those availability constructs you have in Azure, which is saying you wouldn't have if you just turned on Windows Update. So if I think about this for a second, when I deploy things to Azure, well, I deploy to a certain region. So what it's going to do is this automatic update capability is going to consider the region. Now, what it will do is it will never deploy those patches to the paired regions at the same time. So if I'm like East US and West US, it won't allow that critical and security patch to go to VMs in both East and West at the same time. Then from the region, I can think about within the region, I have availability zones. So it would roll that to AZ1 first, then AZ2 first, then AZ3. If I'm using things like availability sets, well, it's gonna roll them out based on my update domain. So I might have five update domains, may have up to 20. But again, it will roll them out based on those availability constructs I'm actually using. So it will never do multiple AZs concurrently within my sub. It will never do the same update domains at the same time. And it's using the VM's health post update to check, did this work or not? So based on that platform health indicator of the VM, only if it's come back as a successful patch, will it then roll on to the next AZ, the next update domain, whatever. So now I can essentially just turn on this capability, it uses the VM agent, and it will, within 30 days of the release of those critical and security updates, start rolling them out, but in a really kind of safe way, region at a time, AZ at a time, update domain at a time. And again, if it detects a problem based on the health status of the VM, it won't carry on deploying those patches. Now, if I want more control, then I would still kind of use the update management feature that ties into log analytics, um, Azure automation. I can do Windows and Linux there. I can pick different types of patches there. I can pick more detailed timing, which groups of VMs. So it's a, it's a much richer capability. 
But if I just need fairly simple to meet maybe certain compliance requirements, hey, I need security and critical rolled out within a certain time frame, this is a nice feature. And again, it's better than the standard just built in Windows because it's aware of those kind of availability constructs of Azure my VMs are using and we'll kind of do them one at a time, so to speak. So that's now, again, you can go and sign up for the preview and start looking at that. Azure Storage, both the blob change feed and object level async replication has gone GA. And really that object replication depends on the change feed. So the change feed is, hey, if I create a blob, delete a blob, change properties about a blob, whatever that might be, it writes that down. It writes it into a special uh, dollar bob change feed area using the Apache Avro format. Now this is immutable, it's durable, it's read only. And it's gonna guarantee to have them in the correct order. So there are things like the blob um, events you can sign up for that would also get similar information, the same information, but it's not guaranteed to be in order. This, this change feed writes them in that immutable, I can't change it, it's guaranteed to be in order to that log file format that I could then consume from other applications. And one of the things that consumes it, remember, is this object replication. Now, I've talked about this in the past, so I'm not gonna go into super detail, but this is the idea that, hey, look, I, I have my storage account, so I have my kind of storage account one, and then within there, I can have multiple different containers. So I could have container one, I might have um, container two, and then I have different blobs, block one, block two, block three, etc. And what I can now do is, ordinarily, I could do things like GRS, and that would replicate the entire storage account to a paired region. I had no control over that. So with this, I can create another storage account, the same region or different region. So I'll create a storage account too, and that could be a completely different region. I can create a storage account three. Again, could be a completely different region. And I can say, well, this container, I wanna to replicate to another container over here where it would now asynchronously copy the same content. This one goes to a different storage account to a container here, where once again, it would kind of copy the content. Now I can only be part of, I can replicate from a source to two different storage accounts. I can be part of one kind of replication relationship, but this is really powerful for giving me far more control over where I want to actually go ahead and replicate that content to. So again, it is asynchronous. So if there was some kind of unplanned problem, I could lose data but it, it actually is kind of, I think it's faster than the regular kind of GRS type replication you get at the storage account level. It's using that change feed to actually go and trigger these. But now I can go and replicate two different places. So that is now GA. Miscellaneous, um, classic cloud services. Um, some of you might still be using those. Well now that service health is visible under my service health, health resource health. So if you ever go and kind of look at the portal, so if we look at the portal for a second, if we go and kind of search, well, I can go to here and I can say, hey, look, I want to look at my service health. And what service health shows me ordinarily are any problems related to the overall service. That's what this is showing me. Now, if I think of a look at resource health, it will show me any problems directly related to my services. So what's now gonna happen is, hey, if I have those kind of classic cloud services, they would show in here as well. So it would show like degraded. If some of the instances were unavailable, I would now see a kind of degraded view for that. So that is now kind of available. You would see that in there. Azure Security Center, the continuous export is now available for security findings. So continuous export lets me send these kind of recommendations to Event Hub, to Log Analytics. And what I can now do, I should jump back over to that, is if I'm in here, so I'm in Security Center, 
I can look at my settings. I'll actually go ahead and under here, if I'm in my security settings, look at my subscription, I can do continuous export. Now, again, I can see Event Hub. I can say, do I want security recommendations? Do I want security alerts? I could also send it to a Log Analytics workspace. But if I go ahead and actually turn on security recommendations, now we have this option for include security findings. So I can actually change that to yes. And that really applies to things like, hey, if I have vulnerability assessment findings on my SQL database, my SQL servers, and my Azure Container Registry, powered by things like Qualys, um, vulnerabilities found in my virtual machines, I can actually go in ordinarily and it's showing me more detail. So the security findings would include that now as part of that kind of continuous export. So that is now an option that GA. Finally, Azure Cost Management Cost Allocation. Now, this is only if I have a, an enterprise agreement, if I have a Microsoft customer agreement. But the point of this is, ordinarily, we have great visibility into the costs of our subscriptions, of our resource groups, of things based on a tag they have. Now, imagine I had a scenario, maybe I've got a, an application one and that's in its own resource group, or it could be a sub, or it could be a certain tag, and I have a whole bunch of resources, then I have maybe a completely different resource group with a different application, and it's a different resource group too, and that's the resources for another app, and then there's another one. And so right now I could go and look at kind of cost management and see the resource cost of each of those subscriptions or resource groups or based on a tag. But imagine I have a scenario, I have some kind of shared area. Now maybe this is shared because it's a networking hub. If it was a networking hub, maybe I've got things like Azure Firewall in there, I've got my Express Route Gateway, I've got my Express Route Circuits, and they have all those costs. And essentially those costs are based on these resource groups or subscriptions or tags, whatever. So what cost allocation lets me do is I can say, hey, I have a certain source. Now that source again can be based on subscription, resource group, or tag. And I can say whichever I select, I want to allocate the costs for this, the target I select, this certain subscription, this certain resource group, and I want to distribute it to these targets. And the targets can be subscriptions, resource groups, or tags. And when I do that distribution, I could have a kind of equal distribution. I could have some kind of fixed percentages. I could have it as a percentage of cost. So imagine this one was costing 2,000, this one was costing 3,000, this one was costing 5,000. Well then, this would get 50% of this bill, this would get 30%, this would get 20%, because it's a proportional weight. Or I could say, well, percentage of cost based on just the networking, or just based on the storage, or just based on the compute cost these things are running up. So if this was maybe a networking hub, I really only care about the amount of networking these things are doing. So that's how I would allocate the costs. This could be um, shared databases. I might have another hub here where I've got a big set of database or synapse, things like that, that these all use. Well, then maybe in that case, I want to divide it based on well, how much storage they do, or maybe how much compute they're doing, or just the overall. So this cost allocation is super powerful. Now, I don't see any difference in terms of the bill from Azure. Where this shows up, is if I now go and look at this subscription or resource group or tag, depending on what I've configured, when I go and actually say, hey, I want to maybe group by cost allocation, what I would see now is when I look at the costs, I would see kind of the cost based on the resources that it has, but I'll also see a kind of separate allocated i.e. stuff that has come from somewhere else that I have a certain percentage of. So now for me, if I'm just maybe showing them 
hey, app one, how much resource you're using, or maybe I even charge it back, it's now much, much easier for me. When I go and look at that target, again, be it sub, resource group, tag, I'll now see those costs included, makes it easier for me to show the cost or even build them back. So that's the point of this kind of feature. And that's it for this week. I hope it was useful as ever. Again, stay safe till next week. See you then.